Redwood Streets here, and if you're watching my series about being a monk, I'm kind of coming from the future. The reason is I am no longer a monk. My initial reasons for becoming a monk had nothing to do with YouTube, and I didn't know I was going to be allowed to film, but once I got there, I found out I could film, but I couldn't edit. So now I'm going back through the videos, editing and putting them out one at a time. I've received a number of questions, so I thought I'd do a really quick video just to answer some of them. Uh, let's get right to it. Are monks vegetarian? I think it depends on what part of the world. So I should say that everything I'm answering for is regarding a very specific part of one country, Thailand. I'm talking about Northeast Thailand. And even there, monasteries and temples vary in their rules and procedures. But I can say confidently that most uh, monasteries are not vegetarian. You can eat meat. There are monks, for sure, who are 100% vegetarian. But uh, in general, as a monk, you can eat all kinds of meat and you will have it put in front of you. But I would say a large part of the diet is fruits and vegetables. I was asked why in one of my videos a monk was driving. Let me just say, that's the caveat for everything I'm about to say is my area, my monastery. You can drive if it is in line with your duties as a monk or you're supporting the temple, the community, that kind of thing. You can't just joy ride and check out the scenery and go to restaurants and stuff. But uh, there's a person sometimes called Sangali or also Nak. There are three phases of becoming a monk. First, you're a Nak, which is kind of like an assistant. I did a video about that. And then you're a monk, which is Prat. And then you can become Sangali. Each of those generally is done in threes. I was a Nak for three days. I was a Pra or monk for three weeks. And then I was a Sangali for three days. Sangali, I did the driving and uh, things that monks normally won't do or it's not normal for them to do uh, around the temple. I was asked, if we lock our guti, guti is the place where we stay in. Wow, they vary from super old, dilapidated, or rustic looking. Uh, some of them are pretty incredible. I've got a few pictures of some of the ones from different temples that we visited. But it is customary to lock the guti. Uh, no, you're not worried about another monk breaking in and stealing your toothbrush. I think it's um, just a customary. And there are also small towns nearby some of the monasteries. There wasn't one near us. We we're truly 20 minutes into the jungle. And the town that was 20 minutes away was really uh, small. But it is customary uh, to lock your guti. A lot of questions about food. I know I already talked about vegetarianism. Uh, a monk cannot order food. You can't say, hey, tomorrow, can you give me eggs and throw in a little of those fish I like? Uh, you can't do that. You're not supposed to do that. But the yom, the people at the temple and nearby the temple who support the temple, believe me, they're going to be watching. I was kind of shocked. I had people after I suck, okay, you're a nak, then pra, then sangali, and then you suck, you become a tit. I'm a tit. So... After I became a tit, after my suk ceremony, people were coming at me with questions like, now I noticed on the third day, you picked up the watermelon, but then you set it back down. And I noticed you got that uh, bua hima, you got that snow lotus. Do you like the snow lotus? They really wanted to know what stuff I liked and what stuff I, I didn't like. I guess because they couldn't ask me as a monk. So... I got, no pun intended, grilled. <laughs> Food is there to sustain life. That's why you only eat once in a day. There's no way you can taste something and have your 
body not register this tastes good or it doesn't taste good. And the people that are cooking for you, they do want to know. So they're going to look at you intently and, and try to figure out. So there are ways. Uh, no, I don't think you should take a bite and say, oh man, this is so good. Oh yeah. No, but if you taste something and I think it's human nature to nod or if something's horrible, maybe you can try to choke back making a face. Different Watts, different, I'm sorry, Watt is the word for monastery or temple. Different Watts have different rules. There's Wat Ba and Wat Ban. Wat Ban is in a city. I was in a Wat Ba, which is way out in the jungle. And I noticed from going to different temples and spending the night sleeping at different temples and hanging out with the monks. I only know this. Today, we're going somewhere at some time. And we're supposedly going to spend the night back here at the treehouse. That much I have been told. What actually happens remains to be seen. Is it better if I look at the camera? Here I am looking at the camera. And then here I am. It's a little odd when I watch the videos back and I'm looking at the side panel. Things drop in the jungle. Things just drop. That's fire ants drop from trees, uh, fruit, leaves, whatever. They do things a little bit differently. I, I guess that's to be expected. So uh, uh, just try to understand that. I, I, I know uh, some of the folks that are asking me questions want to be monks or know a little bit about monks or, or, or are monks. And when they see something different, hey, is, is that right? Should you do that? Uh, the rules vary and are interpreted, I should say. The rules are the same. The rules are interpreted a little differently. And because of your circumstances, things are done a little different at uh, different temples. If you said flat out a monk can't drive, well then the car that you get to to go to Bin Tabat uh, breaks down or, or somebody gets sick and needs to go to the hospital, you can't drive? Well, of course you can drive, common sense. Another question I got was, do you have any assigned activities? I didn't have assigned activities, but you're kind of expected, and it's good for you, to sweep. That's a big activity at the temple, is sweeping. It's metaphoric for cleaning your mind. That's what you're doing when you meditate, right? You're trying to clear your mind. You're dusting off the shelves of your mind. You're trying to... Uh, uh, clean out your brain and train what we call rightful thought, rightful thinking. That's the, that's the point of meditation and sweeping is metaphoric for that. And it also makes the temple look nice. So generally after eating, we take a little break. Uh, if we have to clean our feet from Bintabat, Bintabat is going out and getting alms in the village and you do it barefoot. And for me, if you know, if you're not, if you didn't grow up, walking barefoot everywhere, it, it can uh, cause issues with your feet, for sure. So assigned activities, I was told, uh, hey, come in, we're going to study Bali. Uh, come in, we're going to show you how to fold the monk robe and stuff like that. But that was really it. Although I noticed uh, some monks are good at audio visual, so they set up the PAs uh, when we have certain activities. One monk was particularly good at uh, engineering, and when the power went down and the solar was out, he was always the guy he would go do it. I, I don't think he was assigned. I think the answer to that question is no, but I think people naturally gravitate to what they're good at and contribute where they can. Where? Where was I located? Northeast Thailand? Kind of at the crossroads of three different provinces, Yasoton, Roy Et and Mukdahan. Driving distance from all those places. And we traveled throughout uh, those places as a monk going to different activities because it was uh, Pansa, it was the month of November, and Bun Gatin, each temple, has uh, their own ceremonies that they pick on a different date. So it's rotated so monks can visit and celebrate Bun Gatin at different 
temples. So I rotated around those three provinces, but uh, my temple is in Roy et province. Burning, man, I agree with the comments that burning doesn't seem right. Seems like you could make it into fertilizer or something. Uh, that's the way they do it. I don't think there's a lot of call for fertilizer. I think they have plenty of fertilizer. And I don't know that it would make sense to burn gas coming into the jungle to pick up some fertilizer that's probably abundant everywhere. Uh, at the least, I don't know, you could just mulch it and leave it. I don't know. Maybe that causes other problems. Maybe it attracts critters. I don't know. But they burn it. That's what they do. It's uh, traditional. And... Uh, yeah, I wish there was another way. Uh, filming, I think I mentioned that already. I was allowed to film, but not allowed to edit, which is why now I'm going back in time and I'm uh, releasing in chronological order some of the things that occurred while I was a monk. So continue to ask questions. Uh, put them in the comments of the videos. I'll be happy to answer anything. Uh, like I said, please understand uh, that Buddhism, for one thing, in Thailand is notoriously flexible. Like, it's probably good to be a vegetarian, but culturally, and if that's, you know, what if you live in Nepal or somewhere where all they have to eat is yak meat? You know, you're not going to starve to death because you're a Buddhist. So there's, there's an element of common sense uh, to the things we do. So please have an open mind when you watch these videos. I hope you find them interesting. And again, I like to emphasize, you know, I wanted to be a monk since I was 17 years old. And I finally got to have my dream uh, come true after I retired working my entire life. And so I'm very thankful to the people who helped make it happen. I told them ahead of time, treat me no different from any other Thai or Isan or Lao monk. Just treat me the same. Don't you know, walk on eggshells and be careful because I'm Farang. And to their credit, they did not. Everybody treated me the same. If I made a mistake, I made a mistake. And it got corrected and uh, that's the way it worked. Will I go back? Uh, yeah, I, I probably will. Yunai Hong, Yunai Kuti. Okay. Wow, you know, okay. What will I do? Well, I'll get my feet uh, in shape and I'll learn some Bali language. Hope you're finding the series interesting. It was a fascinating part of my life and I'm very happy to share it with you. I wish the video quality was a little better and I was more prepared and all that, but this isn't a documentary that was planned ahead of time. It was really spur of the moment. So uh, thank you again for watching. Aloha. Satu.